Martin here for You Rule. Today, we are going to talk about Federalist IV, in which John Jay continues to explain the dangers of foreign force and influence. In this paper, we get a look at what this founding father thought about how a united government discouraged war from arising over unjust, or what he calls pretended causes. Jay begins Federalist IV this way. My last paper assigned several reasons why the safety of the people would be best secured by union against the danger it may be exposed to by just causes of war given to other nations. And those reasons show that such causes would not only be more rarely given, but would also be more easily accommodated by a national government than either by the state governments or the proposed little confederacies. Jay writes that the safety of the people of America against the dangers from foreign force depends not only on their, quote, forbearing to give just causes of war to other nations, but also on their placing and continuing themselves in such a situation as not to invite hostility or insult. For it need not be observed that there are pretended as well as just causes of war. Jay tells us, nations will make war whenever they have a prospect of getting anything by it, and describes the situations and circumstances creating tension between America and European countries. He says, when these countries see an opportunity to advance themselves, they will use any pretense to go to war. Quote, the advancement of the United States will not be viewed with an eye of indifference and composure. It didn't matter if no laws were violated. The fact that American industry cut into the profits of Britain and France would make them take steps to counteract it. According to Jay, they would take peaceful steps if America was strong or be aggressive if they saw weakness. A union and a good national government would put us in a situation that would repress and discourage war instead of inviting it. Is one good government better than multiple governments for safeguarding the union? Jay enumerates the many ways that one united government is effective, basically saying that in terms of military power, one unified government ensures organized, effective, and well-funded efforts. Jay gives readers a real-life example when he turns his attention to a much smaller version of the United States, the United Kingdom. He asks, what would happen if the countries of Scotland, England, Wales, and Ireland were not united and headed by a single government? they would lose their military power. The British Navy would never be celebrated for its prowess and thunder, and each would dwindle into comparative insignificance. What would happen if the states were divided? What armies could they raise? How could they finance a navy? Would they rush to help a state under attack? Or would characteristic national jealousy and infighting poison relations to the point where a state idly watched its neighbor be attacked? and thought only of how it would profit having already made a deal with the invading nation. It certainly has happened many times before. Jay closes by telling readers that whatever we decide, foreign governments will see the state we are in and treat us accordingly. If we are well administrated with a strong military and the people are happy, foreign governments will be inclined to seek our friendship. If on the other hand, Jay says, they find us either destitute of an effectual government or split into three or four independent and probably discordant republics or confederacies, one inclining to Britain, another to France, a third to Spain, and perhaps played off against each other by the three. What a poor, pitiful figure America will make in their eyes. How liable would she become not only to their contempt, but to their outrage? And how soon would dear-bought experience proclaim that when a people or family so divide, it never fails to be against themselves. In Federalist IV, and later in Federalist V, Jay reminds Americans of the predatory nature of international politics. It has been this way throughout human history, and it continues today. Britain lost the American Revolution, but it was not ready to let go of its former colonies, and it would be waiting for an opportunity, as would France and Spain. In addition to this, the economic system of mercantilism added urgency to the natural competitiveness between nations, and smart Americans would heed Jay's warning. You probably remember hearing about mercantilism and file it away in your mind in the same place you put hoop skirts and muskets. 
But this system is not dead, and it is an important piece in understanding the interactions between colonies and their mother countries. In the interest of time, I'm going to do a separate video on mercantilism because it's too important to tack on to the end of Federalist 4. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and visit URule's website, urule.life. Until next time, remember, you rule.